Switching gears to the 2016 presidential race and brand new Fox polls on the state of play. Florida Senator Marco Rubio jumping to the head of the GOP pack with 13 percent, followed closely by Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker at 12 percent. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul with 10 percent with a plus or minus 3 percent margin of error. Hillary Clinton still the undisputed favorite among self-identified Democratic primary voters with 62 percent support followed by potential rivals, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren at 12 percent. Vice President Joe Biden comes in with 9 percent, plus or minus 5 percent margin of error on that poll. And in a hypothetical general election matchup, Hillary Clinton bests the entire Republican field, with Rand Paul faring the best against her, 46, 43 percent. Again, a plus or minus 3 percent margin of error. Let's talk about it all with Kevin Cirilli, reporter for The Hill. Alex Pappas is political reporter for The Daily Caller. Welcome to both of you. Thanks. Kevin, Thanks uh, for having me. a lot of people have assumed that we might see another Clinton versus Bush matchup. Does it look likely to you based on these poll numbers? Well, I think it's very early to, to begin predicting who's going to win the Republican nomination. Now, that being said, I do think, John, that uh, former Florida Governor Jeb Bush is going to have to separate himself from the Bush dynasty. What's, in, what's interesting about these poll numbers is that the Bush dynasty actually bears a little bit less than the Clinton dynasty. So he's going to have to offer a vision for the future. He's going to have to articulate to voters how he is going to be different from his father as well as his brother. And I, I expect that Bush World is working hard right now to uh, make sure that he offers a, a clear vision for the future. It's going to be interesting, though, to see how he does that. Alex, a first-term senator named Marco Rubio has shot to the front of the Republican polls. Does that surprise you? I'm actually not that surprised at all. I mean, he's the last Republican to announce. And I actually think that 2016 may be shaping up to be a lot like 2012, where you have these kind of flavors of the month. And so uh, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, over the next month or so, when we see more people get into the race, everybody from Mike Huckabee, Ben Carson, Carly Fiorina, that I think they're, they're going to see their time in the sun. Uh, you know, but if I was Marco Rubio's campaign, I think I would be actually more excited, not necessarily about the fact that he's leaving the polls, though, of course, they're excited about that, but on this question that the Fox News poll had about who is the candidate of the future. And Marco Rubio blew all the other Republicans away on this question. And if you're Marco Rubio, that's exactly where you want to be so you can make the argument that you are the best to run against Hillary Clinton. You are the candidate of the future, the new generation, and Hillary Clinton is the candidate of the 90s. Marco Rubio's campaign has got to be thrilled about those numbers. Yeah, Kevin, the, the interesting dynamic is going to be Marco Rubio uh, versus Jeb Bush in the primaries because, you know, Rubio has been uh, Bush's protege. Yeah, you know, this is like a, ba a political battle between uh, the, the mentor of, of Jeb Bush and the protege of Marco Rubio. These are two hometown guys going at it for the, the highest office in America. And, and they're also battling right now behind the scenes, jockeying for political positioning among arguably the same donor base. What's interesting about Senator Rubio is that he's uh, attempting to kind of walk that political line that's going to be very dip difficult tightrope in a Republican primary between the more conservative Tea Party aspect of the Republican Party as well as the more moderate. Yesterday he was on a uh, conference call with reporters for American for Prosperity, a Tea Party group. So already he's trying to toe that, that line. Alex, the polling shows that a majority of the Americans don't find Hillary Clinton to be particularly trustworthy. Uh, if that's the case, why is she doing so well on the Democratic side? I mean, you want a trustworthy president, don't you? Yeah, you do. And that's why these stories right now, the ones about the Clinton Foundation, are just so damaging to her right now. Uh, because, you know what, it speaks to the, to the issue of, do you actually trust you know, what Hillary Clinton and the Clintons are saying? I think there are a lot of even Democrats out there, who, uh, especially Democrats, who admire the Clintons. But there is this kind of sense that sometimes there's baggage. You're not really always getting the whole uh, story when they talk. You know what, just ask Mitt Romney, what happens at the very beginning of a campaign when there's a na narrative set against you? Mitt Romney's was that, Mitt Romney's was that, you know, uh, that he couldn't relate to average, everyday people. And then every story that came out, you know, kind of reinforced that, the 47% video. Mm. I think Hillary Clinton runs the risk of the same sort of thing happening here every time we get another one of these Clinton Foundation stories. Kind of interesting, though, Kevin, because the Clinton name, uh, you know, the dynastic name, yep. if you want to call it that, that seems to be helping Hillary Clinton. The Bush name seems to be a problem among voters, again, uh, for, for Jeb Bush this time around. Can you explain that? 
that to me is the most interesting part of these poll numbers. And I think, again, it comes down to this, uh, this larger political fight that is going to unravel in the next couple of months, especially as we hear more Republicans getting into the race. I mean, it really is fascinating to see when you compare the Republican crop of candidates versus the only one officially declared candidate in the Democratic Party. Uh, you know, I, I think Alex made a great point, though, about trying to frame a larger narrative, and that's what Republicans are trying to do now. And I, I think that at some point, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is going to have to uh, answer a lot of the questions that are being asked about her, whether it's through congressional testimony, but also through the media. Mm. Uh, we've seen her very uh, in controlled settings so far. And again, it's very early. But at some point, I do think there's going to be increased pressure on her to answer a lot of these questions. We'll be talking more about media coverage of her current uh, issues a little bit later in the hour. Alex Pappas, Kevin Cirilli, thank you both. Thanks. Have a good weekend.